We are going to take you on an amazing journey while you will, where you will learn how to come home and how to become a partner to life. So healing the centuries-old wound of separation is not an easy thing, but it can be achieved in seconds. First comes understanding, and then the breaking of old habit patterns. Understanding is an inside job. Breaking patterns takes community. I'll be sharing my story and the resources that got me here, both from science, indigenous wisdom, and systems thinking. I'm committed to creating an entire generation of regenerative leaders, and you may be one. You are welcome to DM me at any time. If you want to go deeper, then joining the Coming Home Project community as you learn to live regeneratively would be a good thing. The shift is as easy as shifting from living on the planet to living with the planet. Easy to say and much harder to do. But life loves life. So there's nothing to fear, just old thought patterns and habits to change. So join me as we explore the wonderful, amazing biology of life and how that changes everything. Let's get started. I'm Catherine Alexander. I work with Bridge to Partnership and the Coming Home Project. Bridge to Partnership is focused on coaching and consulting, helping people and businesses move forward in this time of chaos. I thought I would talk about moving on from collapse today. And you know, collapse is a bad word. People don't want to hear it. We are being told that it's a downer, you know, people don't want to know about this. They're going to, and it's like, yeah, but really? You can't stop it. What's happening is happening. It's not like you're creating it when you talk about it. It's already in process. We're already seeing a lot of things happen, which are really connected to the fact that things are winding down. They are falling apart. They are not working anymore. So I don't know how we can move on from collapse. I think that's a fantasy. It's not possible to move on from it. We can, however, deal with it. And that's what I want to talk about because we don't want to say bad things. We don't want to depress people. We don't want to, you know, make it a downer. We don't want to instill fear in people. I don't even know what to say about that. It's like, as Greta said, the house is on fire and you're saying, oh no, not really. You know, it's warm in here, but it's not really on fire. It's okay. Stay in the living room a little longer. Figure out how to, you know, what you might do in an emergency, but don't worry about it right now. I don't understand that. I'm sorry. I just don't. The house is on fire. It is time to do something. It means that you need to have the courage to be a survivor. And this isn't negative. It truly isn't negative. Knowing that the house is on fire is not negative. It's reality. It is reality. And it's sad. Yes. There's a loss. Yes. But that doesn't mean you go, oh my God, I don't want to know the house is on fire because I don't want to lose stuff. You would never say that. Why do that in this situation? There's going to be loss. Yes. I want to say get over it, but that's not very nice. And I'll get to that. It's, we are in a time of major change. And looking at it as change, maybe is a better point of view than collapse. Because that's really what it is. Things don't end. Life isn't going to end. Our way of life might definitely, will definitely. I don't think there's any choice thought about that. That's, that's a given, I believe. However, 
Our species could end. That's true, too. But life will continue. So this is not an end. This is a transition. It's a change. It is, yes, a loss of a lot of things that we're familiar with, used to. Absolutely. But that can be exciting. But you have to let go. We have to be okay with that. And that's what I want to talk about, this process of getting from, oh, God, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to hear it. La, 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 to, all right, this is what's next for me. I want to talk about that transition because that's what's real. That's what I can help you with. That's what, where you should be. <laughs> that's where it gets fun, interesting, and exciting, frankly. So it's that transition, that place from, to, my gosh, look what I can do. This is what's next for me. I want you to be in that space. This is what's next for me. I want to help you get there. There's usually three strategies to this big process. And this is not rocket science. And it doesn't, and it applies to every major change in our life that we ever go through. The first is denial. And we know how we do that. You can be, you can have a lump, and I did this, so I can speak to it. You can have a lump in your stomach and just decide not to see, sleep on your stomach anymore for years. <laughs> I did that. That's denial. Okay, It didn't change the lump. It didn't make it go away. <laughs> it did absolutely nothing except put it off. And when I finally went oh my God, I've got a lump in my stomach. <laughs> it was wonderful. That cancer journey was fantastic, okay? Wouldn't change a thing. That's the point. But in order to get there, I had to know there was a lump in my stomach. I had to go, all right, I got to deal with the lump in my stomach. I got to pay attention to it. But we deny things. We resist doing that. We put things off. We want to make it better. Oh, that's nothing. It's not, it's not, it doesn't really bother me. It didn't bother me. I had no pain. You know, I just didn't sleep on my stomach. So I didn't even think about it actually after I made that choice. <laughs> I mean, we're amazing, aren't we? Yeah, you have to kind of appreciate our ability to prevent ourselves from seeing things. I think that's sort of an interesting aspect of humanity. But if we really want to survive, at some point, you've got to recognize the problem. You've got to know it's there. And I think a lot of people are, yeah, it's there. Things, bad things, you know, different things. Things are going to happen later. But that's not really true. Things are happening now. And I think that the acceptance piece allows you to really see that, which means you can strategize about how to get around it. Because it is possible to do things about it. It's always possible to do things about it. You can't always change the outcome. So I want to go back to my cancer journey. That was 10 years ago. I'm fine. In fact, now I'm so fine that I take no medications, none, zilch. I do vitamins, but I have no drugs in my system. I have never taken drugs. And we can talk about that in another video. But that was only because I recognized I had a lump in my tummy. And it took a, <laughs> it took a knock on the head for me to get that. Okay, so I have compassion. I'm not blaming people for being in denial. But if that's you, if that's where you are, if you're sure that it's not going to be so bad, if you're sure that somebody else will take care of it, that we'll get through this, if yeah, maybe you're angry, just pissed as hell, that people aren't doing anything about it. I mean, if any of those kinds of emotions are things that are running through your mind right now, I get it. It's a stage. 
it's a step in the journey. So you are where you need to be for right now, but you don't want to stay there. You want to move to the next stage. So I'm going to talk about the five stages of grief from Kubler-Ross, because I think it really, really applies to this situation. Grief. You know, we don't want to be in grief. I've been there too. When my son killed himself, I spent a year in rage, screaming, yelling, angry, sad, depressed, all those things. It took a while to go through that. And there's, you know, this these stories you tell yourself, well, he's gone. It's like he went to China. I could pretend he went to China and he's not really dead and he's just not talking to me. I mean, all of these things that we do to make ourselves feel okay. It's, it's okay. It's human. It is what we do. It's just not okay to stay there. And that sometimes takes working with or walking with someone else to do that. So I'm encouraging you to reach out if that's where you are. Don't feel bad about it. Just know you want to be in a different place and figure out, we can figure out together how to get there. So the first stage of grief, of course, is denial. The la, 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 I'm not going to listen. It's okay. Everything is fine, which means we're just doubling down on our life as we're living it. So I'm worried about my career. I'm worried about my mortgage. I'm trying to figure out how to get the kids in school. I'm working to make my business grow. All these things are consuming me, and that's all I can think of. Now, it sounds like an okay place to be because you're dealing with reality. You're not. You're de dealing with fantasy, and you're making all these plans and expending all this energy in stuff that's actually not going to matter. That's part of what collapse means. That's part of what this change is going to do, is all those things we're counting on aren't going to show up the way we, they, we think they would, not the way they used to. It's going to be different. So it's time to think about that, to really begin to feel into what the difference is going to look like so you can meet it head on, so you can address those issues, so you can plan for it. It's The change is not bad. The resistance is the problem. That's what's going to cost you if you stay there. That's where things are going to catch you on prepared and surprise you. And that's what I'm trying to get around. You don't need those surprises. They don't have to be a surprise. So denial is the first thing. If you're going to stay in the game, then the next stage can be anger. And actually, you don't do this necessarily in a, you know, first this and then that and this. These can flow back and forth. So understand the five stages. Recognize your own self. Where are you? Are you feeling that anger, that angst? Are you just, you know, what the hell is happening? Why is it happening to me? That's a normal way of engaging with these kinds of major changes. That's part of the resistance and the denial piece is that, you know, it shouldn't happen to me. Why me? Why me? Why me? And then we get into this bargaining. Well, you know, Earth is going to go on anyway, so it doesn't really matter what I do. Life is going to continue, so it's all going to be okay. That's What do you mean it's okay? It's not okay for you. Do you really want to just like die? Do you really want the species to just die? Is that really what you want? I don't think. But that's one of the bargaining tools, the chips, you know, that we use. Other life will continue. That is going to be true. Absolutely, other life will continue and life is going to evolve to meet the circumstances it finds itself in. That is the brilliance of nature. 
So <laughs> what has that got to do with you and us? So unless we decide to be part of the game. If we love life enough to engage with it fully, then the next question is, how do I do that? And that's the journey I want to take you on. How do you do that? However, you know, when the bargaining doesn't work, when you actually realize that, yeah, Earth is going to continue, but crap. Maybe we won't. Maybe I won't. How soon is all this going to come? Which is really hard to determine. Nobody knows the soonness of this, but there are some really scary possibilities out there. The thing is, nature has to do what nature has to do. And those species on the planet that are alive now that can adjust, we'll go along for that ride. Those that can't, won't. And there's no timetable. The picture I hold in my head is a cat falling out the window. If you've ever seen a cat fall from a height, you can watch it contort its body so that it lands on its feet. That's what the planet is doing. That's how the planet heals. She does the contortions that she needs to do to come back into some sort of stability where life can continue. We are in that contortion spot. How long it's going to last? No, 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 no way of knowing. However, paying attention to it, knowing that you're falling so that you're doing those contortions to land on your feet is the game right now, as far as I'm concerned. That's the whole point to what I'm saying today is that we're in that contortion phase. You are in that contortion phase, whether you recognize it or not. So the depression <laughs> that comes with, oh, crap, there's nothing I can do about it is part of the, of the process of change. I want to say it's okay, but it doesn't feel okay. And I recognize that. Depression's crappy. You don't want to do anything. You want to go to bed and pull the covers over. Forget about it. I get that. But it is a step in the right direction. I want you to get that. These stages, these feelings, the, these experiences are all part of going through this process and getting to the place where you have agency to actually take care of stuff in a way that actually can be interesting and maybe even fun. I hate to say that, but it's true. <laughs> Part of the spiritual path, you may have heard, is about letting go. What does that mean? It doesn't mean not caring. That's the thing. It doesn't mean not caring. It's not, eh, whatever. It's not that at all. You can care passionately. What you let go of is any idea of what the outcome looks like. So it puts you very much in the moment so that you're dealing with things as they come. And if you do that, if you can get to that space, knowing that things are changing, being sensitive to that change, being able to adjust to it, it becomes like a dance. It becomes interesting, curious, and exciting. That's where I want to to go with you, is to that space. So it works. So your life has meaning again. So it becomes joyful again. It can do that. Trust me, it's possible. It really is. But only when you get to acceptance. And acceptance is sort of the, if you heard the you, so acceptance is the bottom of the you, and then you come out of it. Because once you accept what's real, you can see what's possible. When you're in denial, the possibilities escape you. It's like, I can't imagine. I have no idea. Yes, that's true. You can't imagine and you have no idea because you're not really looking at what's there. You need to look at what's there. 
And that's what this process will bring you to if you're willing to stay with it long enough. If you're willing to engage it, to feel those experiences, that's what the courage is for. It's not for doing stuff. It's for feeling, <laughs> really feeling that. I mean, when I went through this, I can't tell you the depths of despair. It was days of, I don't know what to say, how to say it, feeling like you're dying. I guess is really what it is. Feeling that everything you love was dying. That you were going to lose everything you love. Because part of that is true. The way we see the world now, and the way we've created the world now, has got to change. It's not going to be like we thought. We don't know what it's going to look like. It will be something that we can be sure of. So hang on to that. Be curious about what that something will be. Because it is there for us, for you, for me, for all of us. Whatever it is. The process of life doesn't guarantee you will live forever. None of us will, right? We all kind of know that. I don't know whether we accept it, but we kind of know it. You know, life does come to the end at some point in time. Uh, I happen to believe in reincarnation, so it's like open one door, close another, not a big deal. But <laughs> this life changes when you die. Absolutely true. That's still going to happen, right? It's not like we're going into living forever. That's not the point. We are beginning to engage with the changes in the way that's real, that gives us the agency to live the best life we can live with the current life we have. It helps us address some of those issues. Maybe we can plan a little bit. But most importantly, we can stop doing silly, stupid stuff that's just going to take energy and not have much of a return and begin to see what kind of return we really want. That's part of the change, I do believe. We've been caught up in stuff that has nothing to do with life, frankly. And most of it is actually anti-life, right? Do you love your job? If you can't say yes, then you're not engaging in life. You're putting life off. You're hoping to have life later. Give it up. You want life now. <laughs> you really do. And going through this process of accepting what is happening, really being present with what's real, will give you the life you want, will allow you to see what's possible in a life that you really want, that you cherish, that you are engaged with, that is meaningful. Sometimes it's easier to do that together with somebody or some other folks. So the Coming Home Project is a community for people like us who are trying to figure it out. And supporting those who may have a path already established. If it matches the path that you would like to do. There is so much to be done. It's not like there's one thing. You know, or one way to approach it. That's not true at all. There are so many things. I have found mine, and I'm thrilled with it. And, it, and I, I can tell I'm thrilled because every time I do that, I get excited. Life should be exciting. It's fun, right? That's why we love life. It's interesting. It's fun. It's dynamic. So if that's not your experience... Now is the time to grab it. Now is the time to make the changes that will allow that to be true for you. So connect with me. Go to the either website, Coming Home Project or the Bridge to Partnership.com. Let's talk. Let's work together. Let's. Oh, 
I was going to say, let's get through this, but we're not getting through. Let's walk the journey together. It is what it is. It is now. And let's see what we can make happen. As we move with the earth and the changes she wants to make, do we want to help her? Do we want to work with her? Do we want to do what we do in a way that's in sync with her? Those are very different possibilities, but they all offer a path forward that's unique to every person walking. So it's finding out what you want to do, what will juice you once you understand the reality and have accepted it, are present with both feet in the now. That's what it means to accept collapse. It is not a bad or negative thing by any means. It is recognizing what is real. When the tsunami is company, coming, you don't sit there and go, gee, I wonder what I should do. <laughs> no, that water moves really fast. So you better get, like, get out of there so that you're around to play when the water recedes. And that's kind of where we are. So don't run from the fear and the depression. Engage with them. Be present with them. They're temporary states. It's not a permanent way of being if you're willing to accept where you are. You have to recognize your anger, not resist it. You have to recognize your depression, not resist it. I'm going to say that again. You need to recognize your depression, not resist it. That doesn't mean wallow in it. That's different. <laughs> it's a very different state. We're here for a reason. And I think the reason is to be part of what's happening. We can only be part of what we recognize is real. So join me on this wonderful journey into a new reality. Get in touch. Thanks for listening. I'm so appreciative of your joining me on this journey. To go deeper, check out the Coming Home Project community. The link is on the podcast webpage and on my own webpage, bridge2partnership.com. It's time to take action, and become a regenerative leader. There's more information on the webpage and in the Coming Home Project community network. You can support my work through donations on my podcast page or by joining my Patreon page. I'm open to questions and messages, so please connect. Let's be sure to leave your name so that I can reference you when I respond. Thanks so much for being here. It's the new splendor lady come to love. It's the new moon.